These are the teams I want to talk about, and we'll go one by one. And I want you to tell me, given where they're at right now, are you buying or selling them as contenders when we get to NCAA tournament time? Let's start with the biggest surprise win of the weekend. That would be Kentucky. No severe wheeler, no problem. This team has had a lot of downs this season, a lot of issues. Uh, The fan base frustrated, to say the least, with John Calipari. Are you buying or selling Kentucky at the national level? McCall, we're going to you first. First of all, I mean, John Calipari is in the Naismith Hall of Fame. Okay. And I know BBN can be a lot to handle. And I know that they can get frustrated. And I've always said Kentucky is kind of a – Shark Tank top job, right? I mean, you know, Tubby Smith won a national championship and they weren't happy with him at the end of his tenure. But I think Cal is secure in, enough in himself as a coach where I don't really know that he cares so much about the noise. And I think that there's, he kind of just blocks it out and he's secure in himself as a coach and knows that he's been to six final fours and it's got a gazillion wins and all these things. Now, with all that being said, I think there was a little bit of a human nature element in terms of Tennessee and, Oh, Wheeler's not playing. We're going to be fine. We're going to be just fine. And probably didn't approach the game like they should have. And that's not a knock on Rick Barnes. That's just, Hey, listen, we're going to be fine. And that's just, you know, young players thinking they've got it all figured out. They're on a win streak, top five in the country. Kentucky just lost to South Carolina. They're without their starting point guard. We're going to be okay. Uh, So am I buying Kentucky right now? No, I'm not buying them. Uh, I still still think they've got a lot of work left to do. Um, You know, I think that South Carolina loss really hurt them. In terms of, you know, NCAA tournament, I think if all of a sudden they turn around and, you know, I I don't know, is Alabama on their schedule again? I I didn't look at their schedule today. I don't know if they're on their schedule. They get them back Um, in the upper arena. Um, But, like, what's another? No. No, they don't, right? So, they've already played Alabama. I know they'll get Tennessee back in Rupp Arena. So, they go 2-0 against Tennessee. You know, that's another quality win. But even going into that game, they didn't have very many – quality victories and i think their best win going in that game was michigan so i think they got work left to do i think i said it a couple weeks ago with about them i think it was a great win credit to cal for you know his team and how focused they were and to be able to go into that type of environment and and pat can attest to that it's not easy to win (sighs) i thought you know kentucky and tennessee are probably the two toughest places to play in the sec and for them to go in there under those circumstances and win unbelievable job uh, but I think too with, with all that being said I think Tennessee fought that human nature you know hey listen we're going to be just fine we're on a win streak don't worry about it they're not very good they just lost to the worst team in the league and we'll be fine and hey man Kentucky came out and fought and their backs against the wall and they responded Matt, your tone when you said Michigan hurt my soul, just for the record. Those are my boys. And when you say hey, Michigan, that uh, hurt reminder. my soul a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> the other thing, just schedule-wise, uh, they, they may not have a ton of great top-tier opportunities. They, they got Kansas. Get, what do you mean? Get, well, I'm going to say, they get Kansas at Rupert, Kansas, right? They get Kansas. Pat, are you buying or selling the Wildcats? I'll tell you, I, I am buying. And Ooh. reason being... Tennessee had every opportunity to win that game. I'm not sure if you saw how many bunnies they missed. I'm talking open layups. They missed at least six or seven open layups. Like that would have easily shifted momentum, kept things in in their favor. Um, Casey Wallace had a goose egg. He didn't score in this game. And he is one of the best shooters for uh, this Kentucky team. He's been shooting shooting the ball at a high clip. He's, the, he's a, the, their best defender. Um, I love Severe Wheeler, but I just have a difficult place with a team like Kentucky um, having a point guard that can't shoot it, shoot it well, mm. well enough consistently. Um, you know, I played for, I played with Irving Walker. I played with Kenny Boy and they could stretch uh, Scotty Wilbekin. All three of those guys could stretch the floor. You cannot go under on them. You, no one would, would dare leave one of those guys wide open in the scouting report. And yet that's oftentimes what happens because, um, 
you know, even though Oscar is down there, he's he's often able to grab a lot of long rebounds. He can't do it the entire game. Uh, I think this Kentucky team shoots better than anyone that's 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 uh, that Coach Cal has had in these last few years. C.J. Frederick and Antonio Reeves, they lit it up. Um, they have a great opportunity in front of them. I think Coach Cal has done a great job of helping these guys once they face adversity uh, to, to respond. I mean, it doesn't get worse than losing at home to South Carolina. Uh, and I, I'm just I'm just really curious to see, are they going to be able to continue to build this momentum? Because before the season, was Kentucky was like a top 10 team. And we were talking about their talent and the capability and the potential we saw. So there's no reason I don't think that that they can get to the tournament and definitely make it out of the first weekend as compared to last year. But Pat, too, like to your point in terms of like going under on ball screens, like that's putting Shigwe in a difficult spot. Because what happens when teams go under? You're going to end up flipping the screen or twisting the screen, right? So for him to run out there, and this is where you were really, really good, you could flip that pick and roll at the end. Like right when you got up there, you could flip your feet yep. and and turn it to where Scotty could come off going to his right hand instead of his left hand. And that's – but with Wheeler, it's – if he goes right, like even look at like the plays at the end of the South Carolina game. When they, when they forced him to his right hand, it was a turnover. Turnover. It was a he's, turnover. He, he can't he go. Struggles I don't... <laughs> going to his right. So if you're going to go under, yeah. he's not going to pull up behind the ball screen. And then all of a sudden, you know, teams call it weak or whatever you want to do in the middle of the floor, and you force him to his right hand, he struggles going that way as well. So, yep. um, listen, he's a terrific player. He's talented. He can finish yep. when he gets in the lane. He can set his teammates up. But you know, scouting reports. I mean, now that we're getting later in the year, like teams, yep. teams know his strengths. Teams know his weaknesses, and. You know, it's only going to get more difficult for him once he gets back in the lineup. He's a one-man press breaker. I love that about him. He is a one-man press breaker. No That's question. True. Don't necessarily teach that. Uh, I I would always buy into Severe a little more if there was just more shooting around him. But, you know, there's a lot of lineup gurus out there that uh, have pointed to maybe let's get Reeves some more shots. Maybe let's get Frederick some more shots. And out of necessity in this game with Case in, in foul trouble and with no Severe Wheeler, those guys did have to get shots. They combined for, I believe, 22 shots in this game. They didn't necessarily shoot the ball great, but I don't know that that's a coincidence that uh, they were able to grind out a win there.